When bullies and tyrants get a taste of their own medicine, they usually don't like it. That's been clear lately with ever louder and ever more shrill screaming from the left when a few illegal aliens end up in their make-believe sanctuary cities and states. You see, it's all for show. But when it really happens, <gasps> oh no, those bad Republicans. You see, when the governors in Texas and Arizona started shipping illegals by the busload to places like New York City, Washington, D.C., and Chicago, they asked for federal help. Some declared states of emergency. And remember, these are the tiny, less than 1% fraction of the flood of humanity rolling into Texas and every other border state. Texas sees that many daily. But it was the move, the genius move, by Florida's Governor Ron DeSantis this week that peeled away the socialist veneer and exposed these people for what and who they really are. You see, Governor DeSantis loaded up a pair of planes and sent about 100 illegals or so to the elitist playground for the rich and famous Martha's Vineyard, a place where people like Barack Obama has a mansion along with other far-left zealots. Let me see the list here. We've got James Taylor, Rosie O'Donnell, David Letterman, Spike Lee, Carly Simon, and Diane Sawyer, to name a few, each and every one wildly wealthy, wildly outspoken about the virtues of sanctuary status for lots of places, but apparently not their virtuous little slice of paradise. In fact, this island, Martha's Vineyard, voted for Joe Biden at a rate better than 80%. Better than 80% of the people here voted for Joe Biden, virtue signaling at its finest. But in fact, the Democrats in Massachusetts, a place that voted overwhelmingly for Biden as well, and the dangerous open border policies, are calling Governor DeSantis de Satan and screaming like smashed cats that he is evil and inhumane for sending these people to this place. Really? He sent them to a wealthy island paradise. How on earth could that not be better than Brownsville, Laredo, or even San Antonio? You would think with the yard signs supporting sanctuary status and claiming how welcoming they are, they would jump up with open arms and celebrate the arrival of a few dozen folks from Venezuela and some others from other desperate places. I mean, the vineyard only has about 20,000 year-round residents, and the majority of the homes, they sit empty most of the year. They're just summer homes. So they must have plenty of places for people who don't speak English, and we know almost nothing about. I mean, what's the problem here, folks? No person can be illegal, right? So let them in your house. In fact, I think people on Martha's Vineyard should just stop locking their doors altogether. I mean, what's the difference really between an unlocked door and an open border, except for size and scope? But I have to report, despite the idea of sanctuary status being great, it just isn't sounding that way anymore from the people in the Commonwealth, no. One thing is certain, Governor DeSantis got the nation's attention and certainly got the attention of the wealthy white liberals living on Martha's Vineyard. Did I mention less than 4% of the people that live there on the swanky island are people of color? Oh, I mean, talk about white privilege, right? This is what they want to talk about on the left, white supremacy and white nationalism. It's what they have right now, and make no mistake. Make no mistake, they want to keep it exactly that way because they didn't welcome these folks. They said, we don't have the services here. We, we, don't, ha we, we don't have the services here to, to handle this. You don't? You've got 15,000 homes on Martha's Vineyard. This time of the year, somewhere north of 100,000 people. You can't spare a sandwich in a spare room? Really? You said you're a sanctuary state a place that has compassion. And you can't muster up a bowl of soup and a place for a guy to sleep? Really? Let's see here. Martha's Vineyard. The, um, the home prices. The median home price as of 2020, so they've gone up since then, was $1.1 million. Martha's Vineyard has 19, count 19, beaches. Certainly we can find a place for some 100 stranded souls, can't we, folks? 15,000 homes. No room for, for these poor souls desperate to come to America? 
You wanted to let them in. You thought Texas could handle it. Yeah, because I'm sure Brownsville this time of the year is far nicer than any of those 19 beaches on Martha's Vineyard. Right. Makes perfect sense. Oh, and by the way, in the 2010 census, here's the number. There were 15,966 full-time residents then, 12 years ago, who identified themselves by one race of the census. 511 of those were black. Out of 16,000 people living there, 500 were black. Oh, they are so progressive on Martha's Vineyard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Joe Biden's administration, by the way, sent 70 plane loads of illegals in the middle of the night to Florida. And now they're screaming at Governor Ron DeSantis because he returned the favor by sending them elsewhere, including Martha's Vineyard, and says those on the left need to stop complaining. Well, listen to this from Ron DeSantis. Beating their chest when Trump was president, saying they were so proud to be sanctuary jurisdictions, saying how bad it was to have a secure border. The minute even a small fraction of what those border towns deal with every day is brought to their front door, they all of a sudden go berserk and they're so upset that this is happening and it just shows you you know their virtue signaling is a fraud okay they they are supporting policies that are just frankly indefensible it is not defensible for a superpower to not have any control over the territory of its country over the borders of its country and he inherited a situation where you didn't have this happening and yes, we needed to build the wall. There was more that we needed to do. He reversed the Trump policies, knowing what would end up happening. And you know, one of the reasons why we want to transport, because we obviously, it's expensive if people are coming here. You gotta, it taxes social services and all these other things. Yeah, it's expensive. I'll bet the folks on Martha's Vineyard can afford it when the median home price is $1.1 million. Don't you think they could chuck up a few a few farthings and help them out? Come on, Sheriff. Throw a farthing or two in there, would you please? Uh, by the way, I've got this great article about the playground of the rich wracked by poverty and social crisis, written 29 July 2022. So this was written the end of July of this year about how they treat the help like hell. Oh, these virtuous white liberals on Martha's Vineyard. Hey, welcome to the party. We've got a lot of diversity coming your way, and equity, too. We'll give you a double helping with that. Sit tight. I'll be right back on the Steve Green Show because I'm just getting wound up.